So a little bit of backstory. I started the channel in 2014, I think. Didn't upload any videos or anything. Just started the channel because I wanted a YouTube channel, but I didn't really take it seriously, nothing like that. Just, just had my own channel. Where the channel started was, I don't know if you remember Mikey. Uh, all you old time subscribers remember Mikey. That's if any of you are still here. But me and Mikey used to ride motocross bikes on his farm. And we used to have such a laugh, like so much fun doing it. And the whole point was I would film, like I bought myself a, it wasn't even a GoPro, you know, like those old ones you can get for like 30 quid or something. I bought one of those cameras and I used to film us because we were having so much fun. And then I would go home, edit the videos. I put them on YouTube and then we would go, I'd go around his on a Friday and we'd watch the video together and just have a laugh. And that's where the channel started. And Mikey ended up selling his bike, like work commitments and stuff. But I still see Mikey all the time. He's still one of my closest friends. Yeah, back then on YouTube, I was, I was watching YouTube as like a viewer. Uh, didn't really follow anyone, just watched compilation videos and stuff. And then I started, because I was getting more into the bike scene, I was watching more motocross videos and duo videos. And then I realized you establish a connection with someone. Like you follow someone, you actually follow them and you can relate to what they're doing. So I started watching videos on YouTube and I just found that people were sticking a GoPro camera on their helmet and just filming a ride. Clip it on and go. There was no context, none of that. So I decided if I just put a microphone in to get better audio, then we should be able to just document this quite well because everyone was doing what we're doing. It's just the way people were capturing it wasn't a big thing. I just remember in January 2018, I decided to give YouTube a go. I was going to upload every single week for one year. So one video a week for one year from January 2018 to December 2018 and to see how the channel did. And it did really well. Like it got 5,000 subscribers. So what I used to do, so the first thing I did was, I don't know if any of you know, but I downloaded a an extension for YouTube, which was TubeBuddy, if anyone knows TubeBuddy. Um, there's a link down in the description below for TubeBuddy. I recommend you doing it because that helped me massively. I just, it, it, it tells you what tags to use, what titles to use. And I had a Honda CRF 250R at the time and no one was really riding enduro and stuff on a CRF 250R. So I remember going on to search thinking, right, I need to get search views. So every week that I was uploading a video, I was trying to make it to the top of search. And by the end of the year, I had my Honda CRF 250R video on nearly top of every search for Honda CRF 250R. I think there's still some that are top now. But that was, yeah, I mean, not to bang on about two, buddy, but that's why I got there because it helped me with what tags to use and what titles to use and what descriptions to use and kind of analyze. It's quite a cool extension, really. But yeah, if you're interested, it's down below. Yeah, now we're at 100,000. So I got 5,000 in the first year, which was insane, that's all I ever wanted. And then it's just been a slow builder from there, really. And now we're here, so, I mean, it is insane. Anyway, that's the backstory to the channel. I know, some of you might find that interesting, but anyway, let's jump into the Q&A and see what you want to know. Right, what do you wear when you ride? Okay, what I wear when I ride? Uh, Texan boots because they're amazing. If you haven't seen the video that I did on Texan boots, you're missing out. Actually, there's not much info on that. I just love the boots and made a stupid little video on it. I wear, in winter, just like when it's wet, I wear seal skin socks. So that's a, another, they're waterproof socks. They are, they're not actual seal skin. Like, a, I'm not crazy. That's just the name of the company. So they're waterproof socks, I wear them. Underneath, I wear like these tighty, um, really tight trousers. I mean, they're not tights. I mean, they're not, they're tights. Okay, the tights. Uh, then I wear Alpine Stars knee guards. Uh, I need knee braces, but I've got knee guards at the moment. I mean, they do, but I don't want to twist the knee, but that's what I wear. Alpine Stars gear. I really like Alpine Stars. I mean, each to their own. There's loads of makes out there, but I, I find Alpine Stars quite comfortable. I wear a Gilet, uh, Pro Green MX Gilet or an Alpine Stars Gilet. Uh, Bell helmet, which is, you know, another thing. Like we landed a Bell sponsor this year, which is insane. Like that, I mean, YouTube opened so many doors, it's actually a bit ridiculous. So I, I feel blessed where I am. So yeah, and Havoc goggles, 100% um, gloves, the waterproof ones for winter. I kind of, I'm not really specific on gloves as long as they're comfortable and they do the job. But I mean, I'm all good with that. <laughs> and yeah, that's it for, for what I wear. What was your worst injury if you ever had one? Worst injury? Wasn't that bad actually. So like, you know, the people I ride with like Rob and Ralph and that, uh, they're basically 90% metal. 
True story, they crash so much that they snap every bone in their body. Me, not so much, not, not got no plates, nothing like that, I'm quite careful. I crash a lot, but I've become really good at it. My worst injury, I just fell over, and the I wasn't wearing knee pads at the time, and the handlebar went into my knee, and that was two years ago. Uh, the knee still hurts now, I have like damaged cartilage or tendons or something, but that's the main reason you should wear knee pads or knee braces or whatever. Just wear your pads. Which brings me on to my next one, actually, which I forgot to mention in what I wear. I don't wear body armor. I know you might find that a bit weird or something, but I like to feel quite light when I ride. Uh, don't wear any top body armor. I wear my knee pads and my boots and my helmet. But other than that, you know, just get scratched when you can. But anyway, that was my worst injury. So how did you grow on YouTube? Uh, well, yeah, that's uh, what I went back to. Just consistency was the key for me. I made sure I uploaded every week. I tried to make every video better and better and better. Just kind of see what people wanted to see. If people, you know, people would tell me they wanted the longer videos, but when I checked my analytics, people were preferring the shorter videos. So I started doing short videos and then people wanted longer videos, did a little bit longer videos. Just trying to, you know, see what everyone likes and try and keep you guys happy and me happy. I don't want to make content I don't like. Like sometimes you can get a video absolutely blow up that you're not happy making really like i've had a few videos blow up like one video's got over a million views and that's just me fitting an exhaust but you know what am i going to do fit an exhaust every week it's, it's, i'm not happy making it i want to have fun and hopefully i can relate that over to you because you guys can experience the same things i'm experiencing i kind of wanted to my videos to make it feel like you're there and also relate because you guys are doing the same thing as me you're out with your friends having fun i just like documenting it like it's just i don't know it's fun how do you manage to keep a full-time job and make YouTube videos? Um, well, YouTube is a lot of work. Like, don't be fooled if you're starting a channel. It's a lot of work, but it doesn't feel like work. I love it. I absolutely love it. I'm so passionate about it. So, like, I work a day job, and then, you know, when I finish work, I edit. I try, so I basically, when I ride, I come home, I put all the footage on the computer, and then I edit it that night. And then I get most of it done that night and then through the week I'll just touch up little bits until I'm happy. I, w I won't really upload a video until I'm happy. And then when I'm happy, it goes up. So yeah, it's quite easily manageable. It's just, it is extra work. If you've got family and stuff, it's quite hard. Luckily I've got a good, uh, good wife that backs me up. Will you ever have a crack at trials riding? Uh, good question. Um, Ralph's been on to me about trials riding. Uh, whether we buy trials bikes or whether we go for a day out trying trials bikes, I think it'd be fun. I think if I tried trials riding, it would make some good videos. I don't know about buying one. I think I'd get about three videos out of it max, really. I just don't, I'm not sure if it'd be that fun. I think it'd be fun to try. It's like I asked you on YouTube before, if you wanted to see new bikes on the channel, like maybe a motocross bike or trials bike. You know, you let me know down in the comment section below what kind of bikes you want to see on the channel. You know, when the boys go to the motocross track, I'd like to have a bike that I can just go there and do it. Not saying it's every week going to be going to a motocross track, but it's nice to have a, a tool that can do the job because we all know it's 90% bike, 10% rider. I'm going to buy a quad this year. Don't give me hate, right? I used to ride quads all the time and I still love quads. So I'm not saying I'm going to bring it to the channel or anything. I mean, you let me know if you want to see a quad on the channel, but I like the Can-Am thousands and all those big off-roaders. So I'm gonna buy one of them. Uh, we'll see. I mean, I might just use it socially and not film anything. It's just, I'm not sure if you guys wanna see that kind of stuff. Or maybe I'll make a second channel, Midwest ATV. What was your first bike? First bike was an ATCC Suzuki, I think, when I was like nine years old. Then I got a 125. That scared the shit out of me, sold that, bought quads, then came back to bikes when all my friends had bikes. So, yeah. Are you going to race this year? Oh, well, if that isn't a question that's asked a lot, the boys go on to me all the time. Are you gonna race here? Are you gonna race me, 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 me? Where I stand on racing, I'm all about the ride free movement, right? I like to do what I want when I want. I don't like rules. That's a really bad point about me. But I mean, I get racing, it's all about pushing yourself and all that, but for me, I feel like when I'm, if I'm in a race, I'm on my own. I'm not having, like, you can have a sort of fun, but I'm on my own and I'm not with my friends, I'm not bantering. Like, I've got such a good group of friends that that's what makes me happy. Like, riding with my mates is, like, we could take the piss out of each other. 
Like if you can get a good bond like that with people you ride with, I mean, everything else doesn't matter. So, yeah, I don't know. Maybe I'll race. Let me know in the comments if you want to see me race. I might try one, but we'll see. I don't know. Where did you get your graphics for your 250? Uh, got them on eBay. Just eBayed plastics and graphics for KTM 250 EXE and found them. Everyone asked me that question, but it's quite simple. I just went on eBay, just bought them, so. How often do you ride with subscribers? Uh, not often at all. Uh, something I want to change this year. I'd like to do a lot more collaborations this year. I'm in talks with people on Instagram about meeting up and riding, uh, doing some different things. So stay tuned for that because it's going to be a good year. Hopefully riding with some big people. Should bring you some good content. As for riding with subscribers, well, I'm going to do a lot more events this year. I want to do a lot more play days and stuff like that and go to Wendy Quarry. So I'll just leave it. If you're not following me on Instagram, follow me on Instagram. I'll probably post there when I'm going to ride in these certain events and then you can come ride. I mean, I'll ride with anyone. Like, as long as we're having fun, we'll meet up, we'll ride. I don't mind. It's just, it's easy. What are your settings for the GoPro? The most asked question. 100% the most asked question. So my settings on my GoPro, I got GoPro Hero 9 now. I did have a GoPro Hero 7, same settings. I just film at 2.7K, 60 frames per second. Uh, GoPro color on auto. I don't do any of the color correction, none of that. Just, I'm very simple. I'm very lazy. I'm very lazy. But those are my settings. It's nothing extreme. These are all things you can find. Like, I've done about four years worth of watching YouTube videos to find out all the stuff I know. A lot of research. That's not even the best settings. They're just my settings. There's better settings out there, but you know, yeah, that's it really. It's, I mean, it's nothing complicated. What is your camera setup on the helmet? Another good question. I use a GoPro Dango Design gripper mount, which clips on the front. I've got a three pound microphone from eBay. Nothing expensive. There's no Sony mics, none of that. It's just a three or five pound microphone on eBay, which I clip in the helmet. I do take the front of my helmet. I've had a bit of stick for that. Everyone just always takes the piss that it's covered in duct tape, but it stops the wind noise. And then I place the microphone at the side of the mouth so I'm not heavy breathing on it. Even though I'm so unfit, you still hear me breathing. But that's the helmet set up. Like I said again, you can find all this on, on YouTube videos that people have done. I mean, I've researched so much, but that's where you can find it if you need to know exactly how to set it up. But it's not complicated, it's quite easy. Uh, what editing software do you use? I use Filmora Pro. I'm not into this Premiere Pro, like all this kind of stuff. It's way over my head. I, like I said, I'm a very simple guy. I like simple edits. You know, this day and age on YouTube with all these big budgets coming on the, on the channels. Sometimes I feel that like videos are too over edited and you know, I joined YouTube to watch creators create their own stuff, not big brands coming in with all these, you know, it's just crazy. But yeah, I, I, that's why my videos aren't over edited. They're very simple. I try and do it in a way where I document things realistically. Um, but yeah, Filmora Pro is what I use. I don't color correct, like I said, nothing like that. And the reason the videos are good quality, because I don't know anything about rendering. I'm not clever. I mean, I should really learn this stuff, but when I drag a clip in on Filmora Pro, it'll automatically render the clip of what it was filmed in, so the right aspect ratio and all this, you know, bit rate, blah, 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 blah. So it does all that for me. It's kind of lazy, isn't it? But yeah, that's what I use. Why did you switch from four stroke to two stroke? Uh, well, that's Ralph's fault. So he was banging on to me for ages when I had my Sierra 450R. He was banging on to me for ages. Get a two stroke, get a two stroke, get a two stroke. And as I said, I'm, I'm very lazy and you probably laugh at this, but when I found out about mixing fuel, mate, I was like, nope. I can't be asked. I really can't be bothered for that extra work. I can't be bothered. So I didn't bother doing it. And then I heard the TPIs were out and I was like, oh, what's a TPI? Oh, well, you don't have to mix fuel. You just put fuel in one tank and oil in the other tank. It does it for you. Bam, bought one straight away. As soon as I found out I didn't have to mix fuel, I bought one. And it was the best decision I've ever made. Not gonna lie. It's actually the best decision I've ever made. Love the bike, like the 300 now. So happy on it. I might do a video on that soon, actually, like a two-month review or something. But there's a lot to talk about with that bike. It's uh, it's a machine. It's an absolute machine. But that's why I switched. And if any of you four-stroke riders out there thinking about switching to two-stroke and you're doing the same kind of riding, I would recommend it. There's a part of me that wanted to buy a four-stroke enduro bike just to 
like an XC version maybe, XCF. Just for when I go to events and it's really muddy, I, I do notice the four strokes have just so much better traction uh, flying through the mud. But, you know, with the hard enduro stuff, the two stroke just, I mean, it's, it wins hands down, it's ridiculous. Would you ever quit your job and go YouTube full time? Uh, I thought about this about three months ago. There was a, 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 I was in a point where I could leave my job and go to YouTube. It was uh, making good money. But at the end of the day, the job I've got now pays me every week and YouTube pays me every month but it's not that great and it all depends if you guys watch the videos like, so you know if a video doesn't do well that affects you for the month I know whatever I'm doing in my job I'm getting the same money every month regardless but YouTube so it fluctuates and I've seen big channels like just die which is what I'm expecting for my channel at some point it will die like everyone gets bored eventually you know, I'm just gonna, you know, enjoy it as long as it lasts. And, and if YouTube becomes a full-time job, will you enjoy it as much as you do when it's a hobby? I'm not sure. Anyway, watch this space, you never know. I mean, I'd like to do it full-time, just so I can upload more videos, do more stuff, travel the world, ride different countries. I mean, it'd be cool, but I'll tell you what, I'll let you decide. If, if you think I should quit my job and do YouTube full-time because it, it would be better content so you'd get more videos but different videos not just endure all the time it would you know traveling the world kind of stuff and riding usa and america canada there's so like europe i want to do a lot of europe there's so many places i want to ride but just time isn't it but who knows watch this space what type of videos are coming up this year hopefully should be a good one when everything's back to normal like i said riding with some big people this year got a few lined up i want to go to romania this year uh that'd be cool and yeah so if I can leave you on a final note, uh, 100,000 is insane. I love all of you. Thank you so much for giving me this opportunity. It's just a dream come true. If you're thinking about starting a YouTube channel now in 2021, forget all the hate. You're going to get hate if you start a channel. Tell them to fuck off. Concentrate on your own life. Don't care about anything but yourself and your family and close people, of course. But other than that, Good luck to everyone. Thank you so much for 100,000 subscribers and I will catch you on the next one. Peace. Love you.